when you were uh, working there, it, 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 the television channel was, was broadcast nationally, right? Yes. Um, Internationally, actually. And what was it broadcast on? Spike TV when I was there. Um, when did you start working for TNA? Well, I've known Dixie for a long time, and I went to work for her September of whatever year. Uh, I was really going to be, a, 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 initially I was going to just work as a uh, consultant, and then I ended up becoming a vice president there in PR, but um, I think it was September 2011. And how long did you work there? It's not long. 18 months. I left March of 2013, I think it was. Um, you had mentioned Dixie. <coughs> Excuse me. You had mentioned Dixie. Who was that? I'm this lady that her family owns the company, Dixie Carter. And, uh, so how, how did you begin working at TNA? We discussed them needing a more national exposure, uh, somebody that knows how to build a national campaign. And so I just started talking to him because I was willing to do other things besides just music. So I thought, oh, that's would be fun. And so y'all had been friends prior to uh, you going to work at TNA? I wouldn't say close friends, but we were we did a lot of work together prior to her going to the press and company. What kind of work had y'all done? She did PR then. She had some music clients. You mentioned uh, when you were at TNA, you were vice president. What was your, your actual title? It was vice president of public relations. What were your, your responsibilities then at the TNA? To run the PR strategy and set up media tours, um, tour press for the live events that were on the road, and set up opportunities for building the, the image of the company. Did you use uh, some of the wrestlers to promote the company? Yes, sir. Uh, and I guess it also in doing that you promoted some of the individual wrestlers themselves as characters on the show. As part of the show, yeah. I mean, they were they were the show. So right. when, when you were at uh, TNA, Hulk Hogan was, was affiliated with TNA as well, right? Yes, sir. What what was his role? Well, he was a character on the show, um, but he had a lot of say in the development of um, storylines and whatever. I mean, he had more, had more of a role than the other wrestlers did. He was more of an office guy as well. He didn't work in the office, but he helped create the storylines and whatever with the writers. Uh, did he wrestle on the show? I don't know. I, I wouldn't call it, but he did wrestling. He was more of a figurehead because I don't think he was a, you know, they would tease him up into wrestling, but he didn't really wrestle when I was there. Mm -hmm. And so uh, it, it, it seems it's up where he's uh, referred to as the general manager of TNA. Uh, I guess that's, that was his role as like the general manager of the company on TV. Right. Uh, <laughs> so, it, yeah, on TV, I guess he would. He would one of the storylines was that he was second in command to, to Dixie, right? Right. Is that in reality how it was? No, sir. Um, his, not in the office. But when, so when he was, was playing a general manager, that was a, a character role. Correct. Uh, was Hulk Hogan important uh, to TNA when you worked there? A lot of his, a lot of the talent were important, but obviously he was one of the higher profile and so I consider that important in the PR world. And, and why was that important? Because people knew who he was and he was easy he was he helped us expose the company. People wanted to talk to Hulk Hogan. They didn't care about the other talent. Right. Uh, so they, they take it from, from what you're saying it, when you were working on PR with the company. Uh, did you have an opportunity to work on PR with Hulk Hogan? Yes, sir. Did you work with him uh, in, in planning media events? 
I take it these are their parents' and stuff like that? Yes, sir. Um, can you tell me a little bit about that, that interaction, like how, how you all work together. Dixie would like to go to him and say, we would like for you to do media. Can we have some dates to do media? And then once, you know, that was agreed upon, um, and usually we would just do a media tour around our big event of the year, which was the Bound for Glory, which was kind of like the WrestleMania for DNA. <clears throat> so once I would uh, get the go-ahead and mark the dates, then I would deal with him on setting up the media and approving which ones he would do with him. Um, and I would just set up the set up the tour and then send him the information. Um, would you say that, that he was somebody who uh, is experienced in dealing with the media? Yes, sir. Um, during the, the time that you had worked with him, uh, were there particular media outlets that he had good relationships with? That he had good relationships with? Yes. Yes. Uh, with which outlets stand out in mind? Howard Stern, TMZ. Why do you say that he had good relationships with those folks? Because he did. Um, in, in working with him, uh, was there a particular type of media that seemed interested in Paul Cogan? A lot of media were interested in him. National, news, um, he's an icon, iconic figure. I mean, he's, he makes great television. In what way? way? He's a great personality. He's very, he's very engaging, so people like to have him on their shows. So, a couple seconds ago, I had mentioned the, the, the media tour in uh, the, the fall of 2012 in New York. Do, do you recall that? Yes, sir. Um, <clears throat> why, why was that tour planned? For Bound for Glory Go Home um, Media. We call it Go Home Media. They called it the Go Home Tour. And it's the media leading up to the big event. And we do it every year. We did one in 2011. And we worked with Hulk and Kurt Angle and Jeff Hardy, and we did it again in 2012. Those were the two years I was there. And that was the main time we did a major national tour. And, and who was uh, Kurt Hardy and Jeff Angle? Different names. Okay. Kurt Angle and Jeff sorry, Hardy. Sorry. There are two <laughs> other wrestlers that are pretty big okay. um, but that we would use other <laughs> talent as well. In, in 2012, was it just Hulk or with um, not on the national tour. They did some other things, local press and, and whatever, but Hulk did the national tour. Um, what was your I call it a national tour because it was New York and the, the media center. So. And, and the, 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 the media that he was on was all national media. Right. Um, what was your role uh, with the, that media tour in October 2012? Well, I set up the whole media tour, which I started back in probably August of that year. Started setting it up for the first of October. When you say setting it up, what, like specifically, what kind of things did, did you do? Well, usually you cannot book TV day of or week of. You have to set it up. You have to go pitch it, create interest and try to lock down the dates that you have available. I had a two-day window to do press, so I had to negotiate and work with the TV bookers or the print or whomever, Huffington Post, whatever we were doing, you have to set it up well in advance. Mm -hmm. So that's what I mean by set up. Do you recall when Hulk's, when Hulk Hogan's involvement in the war was confirmed? Probably, I, I, I can tell you the exact date, but probably around the end of August because I didn't start setting things up until I had a confirmation that I had those dates for him to do it. And that was probably a month and a half out, out from the tour. And I'd like to, to go ahead and show you one now.
we'll mark this as uh, Exhibit 211. So just to, for background purposes, um, what, I'll be showing you some documents. Uh, some of these documents were documents that were produced by TNA. So I, I was pretty close, probably the end of August, and that was Labor Day weekend. So that's probably what that means right there. Bob was our, um, obviously, director of talent and book. He did all our travel. That's Bob Ryder. Bob Ryder. So then he emailed to me, September 7th was a Friday, so he probably just talked to him about booking the tour. I'd already confirmed it probably at the end of August. You know what I'm saying? So I was close. <laughs> right, 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 right. <laughs> I don't know exactly but, <laughs> but this, this refreshes your recollection that about this little bit of time. But then uh, Bob is confirming to you that he's uh, going to book about. his travel. Mm -hmm. that, that's what that means. He's going to book his travel. And, and the, these are the specific dates that uh, Hulk Hogan is available for the tour, right? Correct. Um, and then they, we were doing two days. And, and the days that he said that uh, Hulk would be available were October 9th and 10th? Correct. Um, so by this point, your understanding was that, uh, that Hulk was locked into coming to New York those days and he was aware of the tour, right? Correct. Um, and then, and it, based on what you said earlier, after Hulk's involvement was confirmed, you then would go ahead and, and be able to set up the correct specific media appearances. Correct. Um, how did you go about selecting, uh, deciding what media to pitch Hulk? Well, somehow I so I know I can get a book. <laughs> um, some of the other is trying to um, make sure that all the markets were covered to try to get tune in for our TV show. Paper, whatever that was. Mm -hmm. So you try, you try to diversify the reach to hopefully get people to tune in to the show. That's how I do it. And so I would do it. In, in this case in particular, when you were going up to New York, uh, you were kind of applying that analysis then to the media that you were pitching every tour. That's how I did every show. Every, every tour I did. With anybody. Uh, was all coming involved? No, I would just run by and who we were going to be doing. Mm -hmm. and, and then I'd send it, and then I would send him the final itinerary once I had everything locked in with all the information. And I'm going to show you another document here that will mark is uh, Exhibit 212. What, what is this? This is what usually I would send to any client when we head out to go on tour. Like go on a tour, I'd send them the itinerary of what we're doing with all the information. So this is an email, in this case, you be sent to uh, Terry Balea. Terry Balea. Chris Thomas, that used to work for me, I mentioned earlier, Bob Travel. And Mr. Atlas was the um, and Terry Belay, just for clarity's sake, is the real name of Paul Hogan. Yes. Um, was it typical for you to, to send stuff to him, to Terry Belay, by email? Yes, sir. Um, do you know whether he received your emails? Yes, sir. How, how do you know that? He would usually respond, got it, thanks, HH. Um, and then this email has, has an attachment to it? Yes, sir. Uh, what, what is that attachment? This right here where it says Hulk Hogan New York Media Tour? Exactly. That's what it is. It's the, it's the media tour. It basically. The outlining our two days in New York. The places where he's scheduled to appear. Where he's scheduled to appear as of whatever that day, Wednesday, whatever the day was, Wednesday of October. The week before we left, I sent it to him. Okay, and this shows that uh, he arrives in October 8th in New York and then has two days of... Uh, 9th and 10th of media. Mm -hmm. um, and I guess as you were saying, the, this list shows the various media that he's going to be interviewed by. Yes, sir. 
Uh, so he was scheduled to uh, be interviewed first by, by Howard Stern. Yes, sir. And then the, the Today Show. Yes, sir. Um, how, how did you decide to, to book him on those two programs? Well, Howard Stern is, um, and Bob the Love Sponge was a part of his show, not at this point, but Howard, we did Howard Stern and Hall. He was on that show a lot prior to me, whatever, but it's a big wrestling audience that listens to him. And there's a guy on the show that likes wrestling. He's now since passed, I hear, Eric. And then the today, and so the timing, you know, you always, you know, from a timing standpoint, in the morning, his show is live at that time. Then you, you just try to plan your schedule to fit whatever shows you're doing. So that's why we did him first. And then we went over to the Today Show and did Kathy Lee and Hoda pretty much after, right after that. And, and why did you book him on the Today Show? Because it's a good show to be on. That's why I booked him on it. So you had a more international audience? Correct. Um, it, then on, on the next page it says Marvel. Marvel Comics. They're big supporters of wrestling and their audience. Again, that's not something we normally do in in other media, but wrestling and things like that. They have a huge website and they do interviews on it. And so they did Hulk. Um, and then it mentions next to that New York Comic Con. So I want to tell you, what is that? There's a, there's a an event called Comic Con that's all over. They have one, they, the big ones in San Diego, I think, every year. But they're, um, the New York one was starting that week, so I was just letting him know that. That's just like a little note to let him know in case they asked him anything about Comic-Con, because they do a lot, cover a lot of the characters. Mm -hmm. uh, and then after that, there's, uh, I guess, an interview with, with something called the Big League. Big Lead, which was um, is a sports website that um, is run by um, ESPN. As, no, Bleacher Report's ESPN, whatever. It's one of those big, it's affiliated with one of those big sites. Can't remember right now, to be honest with you. Right. Um, but that, that was that. That was like a. Uh, we had a lunch. No, it was a hand. It was a handwritten. <laughs> <laughs> it was a. It was a print online interview, and he did the interview during lunch. And then uh, Huffington Post Live. What was that? Right. Huffington Post Live. I happened to Mark Hill is a Columbia professor, and he's a talking head on CNN and Fox, whatever. I happened to see back in the summer where he was a huge wrestling fan and he was talking about that wrestling was dead. And so I went to them and said, I want to do uh, kind of like an op-ed with Hulk Hogan when we're in New York with Mark regarding wrestling's a lot of well. And that's why I had Jeff Hardy, the younger, hipper guy in on that through Skype. So it was a live interview with Mark. Mark Hill. Uh, and then, since Jeff Hardy wasn't there, he did, we did a, he did it on Skype so I could get the younger audience with the, I mean the younger wrestler with the older wrestler. Mm -hmm. uh, and then on the next page there's Hannity Fox TV. That's Sean Hannity's show? Yes. Um, it was canceled. When was that canceled? About 4 o'clock that afternoon. Who canceled? Hannity. Do you know why it was canceled? Yes. Why was that? Because they were huge Hulk Hogan fans and he did not want to um, discuss the situation that came up. So he chose to cancel so he wouldn't have to ask him about it. And then on the, on the following page, VH1, Big Morning Buzz Live, with Terry Keys. Mm -hmm. Then what is that? I don't think it's on the air anymore either. Um, <laughs> every, all these shows are changing, but this was two years ago. <clears throat> it's like a morning talk show um, that they had the big morning buzz. They talked about what was hot, what was going on that day in the world, pop culture, da 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 da. da. And um, 
they like Hulk Hogan and the, and the guy, what's the guy, Andrew, he's not there anymore, but he was a big wrestling fan, so, or one of the producers. And they did just shut up VH1. Correct, yes. Um, and then after that talk. And they had a show, you know, that was on VH1. Uh, Hulk Hogan's family, I don't know what it was called. And the Hulk Hogan's the best or something. The reality. Reality program, so. He had a relationship with VH1. And then following that, it, it has WallStreetJournal.com video. What was that? Wall Street Journal um, is a major, one of the top print newspapers in the world. Um, and the WallStreetJournal.com, which everyone uses their .coms now, um, this guy does in-depth interviews, Lee, um, and he videotapes them, and they run on, which there's the Kardashians and the UFC business. I have, I had links for him to see other ones, so you could see them if you wanted to look at them. Kind of love the, the character of the show. Mm -hmm. um, so he wanted to discuss the business of pro wrestling. That was canceled. When was that canceled? Hulk canceled it. When, when was that? Canceled it about three o'clock that day. Do you know why? He, canceled? he just told me he didn't want to do it. Did he actually make the call to cancel it? Or? No, I had to. It, but you don't know why he wanted it canceled. Okay. Um, no, sir. By having Paul Hogan do this media tour, would it get to hear a name through this national media outlets that it might not otherwise have been able to? Yes, sir. There? When you pitched him for these interviews, did you pitch him as Hulk Hogan? Yes. Uh, you didn't pitch him as, as Terry Bollea? No, sir. Why, why not? Because I was pitched, because everybody talks, no one talks about him as Terry Bollea. They pitch him as Hulk Hogan, the character. And he pretty much is that character when he does his interviews. And he would wear impact wrestling clothes. And the brand. And when you, you book these media appearances, um, you, who would the individual show this would you deal with? You the bookers, the TV booker, the celebrity booker, whoever. There's different bookers slash producers, segment like producers for each show. Um, I just have relationships with them for doing this for 25 years. And, and when you call those folks up, uh, did you tell them why Hulk Hogan was going to be up there with that he was promoting a particular thing? Yeah, they were promoting the Bound for Glory um, pay-per-view special that was the big event of the year. Give me an example of how you might, or how well, like, you did pitch uh, something in October, for this October media tour. Yeah, I'll say it. I'll say it. Hey, Julie. I've got our Bound for Glory, you know, our annual, like, AKA WrestleMania for TNA. It's going to be whatever date it is in April, I mean, October. Um, and I've got Hulk Hogan available to do some media that week, and I'd really love it if we could, we could have him on to talk about the, the event, how to, how to buy it, you know, the pay-per-view, how to get it, da 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 And that would be about it. They would say, of course, we'd love to have him on. We love Hulk. That was it. Booked. It was easy. And you recall that uh, Gawker posted a, a story in that service from the sex tape in October 2012. I did. I'm going to mark uh, as a given 218 another document. Do you recognize this document? I do remember this. This was the day after I, yeah. What, what, what is this? I guess Chris saw the sex tape on Gawker and sent it to the executive team at the label. At TNA? At, I mean, TNA, sorry. Um, Okay, and so and just for the record purposes, this is uh, an email that was sent by Chris uh, Thomas on October 4th at 3 p.m., right? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. 
Okay. Uh, and, and you recall receiving this email? Yes, I did. And the email was sent to Dixie Carter, who we talked, talked about earlier, and it was sent to you. Uh, it also says that it was sent to Andy Barton. Who is that? He was like the... I can't remember what his title was, but it was like him. They were the... Dixie, Andy, and Dean were the three. They ran the company. One of them was the CFO, COO, or whatever, Chief Operating Officer. And he was like Executive Vice President or something. I can't remember the titles. And, and when you mentioned Dean before, that's the Dean Broadhead that this email was also sent to. Uh -huh. um, was this how you first learned uh, that the excerpts of the had been posted? Correct. Well, I think I think it is. I know I, I don't remember. I remember about three o'clock the afternoon after I had sent our itinerary to Hall because I sent it on Wednesday, um, the itinerary, and then I sent an updated one on Friday because I had an Atlas Security because I didn't want to be the only person with them <laughs> after this. Um, but uh, I can't remember if it was from Chris or it showed up in my Google. Okay. But, you, but right on it with you, but I mean, it was around that time, it was mid afternoon, and I remember that. At this point, uh, you and, and Hulk Hogan were, were set to embark on that media tour then in just a few days. Did he follow your advice about handling the sex tape issue?
talk to you about a couple of the specific you had, you had asked about uh, some of the, the, the videos. Um, you recall uh, Hulk's appearance on that Howard Stern show that week? That morning, yeah, first morning we started. Um, how did you think that his appearance on, on that show went? It went probably about what I expected it to be. I knew, I, I knew going in that the Howard Stern was going to be um, pretty explicit or graphic or more open. We all did. It's Howard Stern. Mm -hmm. It really so, uh, it, it went about like I expected it to be, honestly. Do you recall your reaction uh, to the Howard Stern interview at the, the time? My reaction? My reaction is it is what it is. How did you think it worked from, from your perspective? It, it, did you think that the appearance went well? I can't say that. Um, I don't think any appearance on Howard Stern goes well for anybody. So that's just my opinion. So I, 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 I can't answer that honestly. Why do you say that appearances don't go well on Howard Stern for anybody? He's a shock job. That's what he does. He tries to, to, to deflect and, and, and catch people off guard. Yeah, be on your toes. Well, do you recall any of the <clears throat> specific media appearances? Yes. And what Some of them. Not all of them, obviously, because I wasn't in on <coughs> what, what them. Which ones do you recall? I mean, the Today Show. Um, they had him in a ring, but of course, Kathy Lee and Hoda addressed it. They had an emotional moment. You recall all those? Oh, it became a blur at that point. Do you, in, in his lawsuit against Gawker, uh, Hulk claims that he suffered emotional distress uh, after Gawker posted the sex tapes, his sex tape excerpts on its website. Um, when you were with him during the media tour, did he seem emotionally distressed? He was upset. In what way? I mean, he was. He was upset about what he was dealing with. Do you recall what specifically he was upset about? About the sex tape. <laughs> but it, it, do you recall what aspect? Like no, what he did. No, there were no details. It was just he was, we got to figure this out. This is, this is awful. How, how would you characterize Mr. Hogan in media appearances? I would characterize him as the gregarious Hulk Hogan, the Hulkster, the character, when he's in um, doing his interviews. Uh, during the time period that you were in New York on the uh, uh, press tour for the Battle for Glory series in 2012, was his personality different during that tour? His personality was pretty much the same while doing media, yes. And then what about while not doing media? Was his personality? He was a little more. He was a little more um, reserved and um, dealing with the situation. The situation you by that you mean the sex tape? Yes, sir. Discussing some of the uh, specific events that were planned for the media tour, you had mentioned that the appearance on uh, Sean Hannity's show was canceled at 4 o'clock that afternoon. Do you recall that? I do recall. I don't know. It, it was late in the afternoon. I don't recall if it was exactly that, that, that time, but yes. And I think what you said uh, that it was because they were huge H uh, Hogan fans and they didn't want to discuss the sex tape. Was that the reason for canceling? Sean Hannity was, is a fan of Hulk Hogan. Is a he's a new show. He chose to 
canceled the interview because he did not want to go there. He would want, he would have rather have talked about um, the Bound for Glory and Hulk Hogan. You were asking questions about the October 4th, 2012 email uh, string with uh, Dixie Carter. Um, and when she made the statement that um, she wanted to make sure that no one else talked about the sex tape during the interview. Do you recall that? Yes, sir. Um, it was unrealistic for her to think that the tape wasn't going to be discussed. Is that right? In my opinion. Um, it's also not possible on live television to control what questions an interviewer is going to ask, right? That's true. And then um, you were asking questions about um, preparing Mr. Um, Hogan for the interviews that were going to take place during New York and the um, statement that you gave him, uh, the handwritten statement on the full three. You recall that? Yes, sir. And I think one of the things that you said was when, when you had uh, spoken with Mr. Hogan about that, that he wanted to make sure that no one would ask him about the tape at all. Is that right? He did say that. And was that before he had um, started any of the interviews in New York? Yes. So he expressed to you that he didn't want the tape to be discussed at all on the media tour in 2012. He said my other publicist would handle it with the producers. They would work deals with the producer. I don't do that. You said, was that you saying, I don't do that? I said, I don't do that. But his indication to you in the context of making that statement was he didn't want to talk about the sex tape at all. Is that right? He said he did not want to talk about it. And one of the things you mentioned that when he does his interviews, he's in character. Is that right? But like the whole, for the whole Hulk Hogan character. character, yes. He's usually not. He's referred to as Hulk Hogan on the screen and when they introduce him. So he's Hulk Hogan when he's doing interviews. Um, you mentioned with respect to the um, Kathy Lee and Hoda appearance that there was an emotional moment. What was that emotional moment? After when we got off set, he went to the bathroom and was crying and him and Kathy Lee were having a moment talking about how their life has been <laughs> an open book in <clears throat> the public. Mr. Hogan was crying? Teared up, I would say bawling. And that was in the context of talking about the sex tape? Was talking about how life hits you, I guess, sometimes. Was Kathy Lee crying? She always cries. Or was she crying at that time? No, not really. So it was just him crying? Yes? Oh, I'm sorry, yes. It wasn't like he was crying. He went to the restroom to compose himself, so it wouldn't be like boo-hooing. It was just emotional. Had you ever seen him do anything like that before? No, sir. During the... Uh moment with Kathy Lee, where, did, where were you standing? Did you hear that? In the hallway. I didn't hear every word, but I was in the hall. And if you, you didn't tell Mr. Bird everything that you recall about that conversation? I, I don't really recall all the exact words. I just remember where there was an emotional exchange, and, she, and Kathy Lee was hugging him and saying, you know, I understand when your private life gets played out in public. I've been there with her husband, whatever. And that was about it. And he was emotionally, um, he was, you know, he was emotional. And then he went to the restroom. He excused himself to go into the restroom, and he was in there for a little while. I think he was on the phone. That's all I know. But did you know why he went into the restroom? Did he ever say to you why? I think he wanted to compose himself. But did he ever say that to you? No, I'm assuming. <laughs> 